chapter 4. The fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, please. And when we come to Luke 4, come away down to verse number 40, and we'll commence our reading there. Luke chapter 4 and verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, that's unto the Lord Jesus. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffering them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts the reading of his own precious truth. Many, many people tonight, and it will surprise you who they are, they possess a very terrible thought within their minds. And I'll tell you tonight, friend, it would surprise you who thinks it. This thought tonight has driven many people over the edge. Do you know what the thought is tonight? They possess this thought tonight that there's no hope for life. There's many people who think that tonight. There's no hope for life. And sadly, very sadly, many people possess this thought that there's no reason for living. That's how low tonight people can get. That's how low people can come to. They believe as far as their life is concerned, there is no hope for life. There is no reason for living. And many believe tonight there is no light at the end of the tunnel for them. I was reading a wee story just the other day there of a young lady called Sarah Ortiz. If there ever was a girl had everything to live for, it was Sarah. A loving husband, a wee toddler and a wee baby. One morning, out of the blue, Sarah Ortiz woke up out of sleep with a real sense of hopelessness. And she got that so low, friends, she believed that there was no more reason for living. And if there ever was a girl had reason for living, it was her. She got so desperate. She came across the Bible that her minister gave her on for their wedding day. And this went on for many months, friends, many months. She hated to see the light of day. But this day, friends, was going to be different. She came across the Bible that her minister gave her on their wedding day. And in a last-ditch effort, do you know where she turned to? She turned to Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. And she began to read from verse 40. And as she read the portion that we have read tonight, do you know what happened? Light did appear at the end of the tunnel for her. 
And she read on into chapter 5. And when she read about the Lord Jesus healing the leper, and when she read about the Lord Jesus healing the man sick of the palsy, do you know what Sarah Ortis said? The Lord Jesus is the answer to my problems. And there and then, with the Bible in front of her, Sarah Ortis saw that sin was her greatest problem, but Christ was her greatest answer. And there, with her Bible placed in front of her, on the side of the bed, she asked the Lord Jesus into her life. And she was wonderfully saved. Do you know what she did? She went and shared the story with her husband whenever he came home from work. And glory to God, he too got down on his knees. And he trusted the Savior. And thank God tonight, Christ is the answer to our deepest problems. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe tonight Christ is the greatest answer? I'll tell you something now tonight. He's the only answer. In our story tonight, we're coming, first of all, to a time of day. Did you know the time of day there? Did you notice it in verse 40? And as the sun was setting. Now, what's God trying to say to us concerning, and as the sun was setting? Do you know what God wants us to see? God wants us to see that that day was fast coming to a close. It was getting late. And the daylight hours were shortening. And time was running out. You see, friend, this evening, that sun that was setting on the western sky was telling the people of that day that the end of that day was nigh. Do you know what God wants us to learn from that wee phrase tonight? And the sun was setting. God wants us to see tonight that the sun of his mercy and the sun of his grace is setting. The day of grace, dear unsaved friend, and the day of opportunity is coming to a close. And if you're not saved tonight, there's one thing God wants you to see, that the sun of his mercy and grace is slowly but it's surely sinking. And for you, dear unsaved friend tonight, will you listen to me? For you, the harvest is passing. For you, the summer is ended. And you know what the problem is? You are not saved. That's the problem, friends. You're not saved tonight. You may say to me, well, I'm baptized, but you're not saved. You may say to me, well, George, you're I'm confirmed. You might be confirmed, but you're not saved. And I'll tell you something tonight, dear unsaved friend. The sun is setting on all of us. But how far has the sun already sunk as far as your life is concerned. That's why we always preach and always quote that verse, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. For how do you know tonight that the Son of God's grace and the Son of God's mercy has almost sunk for you? I wonder tonight, them two wee lads in Ross Trevor just the other night there. I wonder, as they got into the car that night, 20 year olds, I wonder did they ever think that the Son of God's mercy and grace was setting and about to close their day. There's a wee lesson we all need to learn tonight. Young people could be abiding in the evening tide of life and they don't know it. 
You may be here the night, but you're of all my life to live. You mightn't have too many hours to live, love. Them wee lads in Ross Trevor and many, many others little did they think that the sun was going to disappear that night, friends, as they traveled in that car along that road. As they got into the car that night and put the seat belt round them, I'll tell you the sun was fastly sinking. My dear unsaved friend, I'd listen to me. It's time to seek the Lord. Never you mind George McConnell or anybody else tonight. It's time to seek the Lord because the sun is setting. The time of day is seen. But I want you to notice something else that is seen in this story tonight. There's the terribleness of disease. Look what it says there in verse 40. It says there, And all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. Do you know, friends, and I want a wee word with Christians here now, because this gospel meeting is for you as well. I see a people tonight who was burdened to bring these diseased peoples to Jesus. There was a burden on their hearts. And as they saw the sun setting in the east, they realized it was evening. They realized it was almost coming to a close. It was supper time. And as they saw the diseased lying there in the streets, helpless and hopeless, friend, did they leave them there? No, they didn't leave them there. Well, bring these diseased ones to Christ. And it didn't matter about what disease they had. Do you know what these burdened people believe? These burdened people believe, listen, no matter about the disease, Jesus is able to heal them. And that's true to me. These people who were totally diseased with this awful sicknesses, I'll tell you, friend, there was people who were burdened to bring them to Christ. You know, friend, tonight, I want to tell you there's no case too difficult for the Lord. With man, all things are almost impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But I want to bring you tonight, before you tonight, the worst disease, and it's the disease of all diseases tonight, and that disease is called sin. My dear unsaved friend tonight, it doesn't matter who you are, or what you are, or anything else tonight, you suffer from this awful disease and what the Bible calls, it's called sin. Sin, friends. And the Bible makes it clear about the terribleness of sin. Do you know what it says? The wages of sin is death. And the Lord Jesus says, if you die in your sins where I am, there you cannot come. Now, friends, that's how awful sin is. And if you're not saved tonight, this is you. Friend, you're perishing tonight. You're on the broad road tonight. You're in, a, you're in a terrible state tonight, and it doesn't matter what you own or what you have. John said it through. You can gain the whole world. But I'll tell you something now, you'll take nothing with you. You'll take nothing with you. The worst disease you have is your sin. The worst thing you can lose is your soul, your soul. These people tonight, they were you see the terribleness of the disease here. You know, friend, tonight as they look round these people lying in the streets, you and me would have probably said, ah, that boy there, he's, he's too far gone. We'll not bring him. We'll not bother with her. She's just half dead anyway. But even, friend, no matter how diseased these people were, they brought them to Christ. That's why tonight there's no sinner, no sinner tonight beyond the reach of Christ's healing hands. 
There's no sin tonight that he won't forgive. There's no sin tonight that he won't cleanse. But friend, tonight you focus for a wee minute or two on the disease that you have, that awful, terrible disease of sin. But take a wee look on the horizon because it's getting late now. The sun is setting. How far the sun has set in my life, I don't know. Now, you don't know. And that's why tonight we need to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Because you see, tomorrow the sun may have sank and gone forever. The time of day is in that story. The terribleness of disease is in that passage. But thank God tonight there's the touch that delivered that's in that passage. Take a wee look at the, at the touch that delivered there. And it says there in verse number 40, and he laid his hands on every one of them and he healed them. Do you know something, friends? The Lord Jesus ignored none of them. The one who was sinless, the one who was pure, the one who was holy. As he looked upon these people ravaged with disease, friend, he didn't ignore one of them. Why? Because every one of them was dear to his heart. And I'll tell you, love, you're dear to his heart. And sir, you're dear to his heart. Here these people lay, they lay at the feet of the Lord Jesus, and as he looks upon them, he didn't look on any of them as a hopeless case. He saw them as a recipient of his love. My dear unsaved friend tonight, no matter what you think you've done or what you think you are or where you think you are or whatever it is, I want you to know tonight you're dear and dear to the heart of the Lord Jesus tonight. He doesn't look down on you and say, not her or not him. We see that the Lord Jesus, even though he was spotless and pure, he put his hands on each and every one of them. By the touch of his healing hands, everyone enjoyed the blessing of healing. No case tonight was too hard for the healing hands of Christ. No case is too hard for him. I want you to know, love, and I want you to know, sir, the healing hands of Christ can take your sin away, whatever that sin is. As far as the east is from the west, I will remove their transgressions far from them. You've heard me tell the story many of a time of the wee drunken woman in Lime Grove who I got the phone call to go and see. She knelt that night when I went to talk to her, and I'll tell you, friends, she was drunk. And when she got on her knees and she asked the Lord Jesus into her heart, I'll tell you, she got up and she was stone sober. She knew what it was to have the hands of the Lord Jesus upon her. And she lived for Christ for one month, and the Lord took her home. I remember doing a gospel mission for Lurgan Baptist Church last year at Grace Hall. The very opening night, Who do men say that I am? That was the text. And this man spoke to me at the door and says, I need to talk to you. And me and another brother, Gordon Wells, we took him into the wee room. Do you know what it is? The smell of drink of him was unreal. She says, I want to get saved. I want to get right with God. Well, she says, I come on and we get on our knees and we talked over a few things. And that man got saved that night. And one time when I was in holidays last year, I went to Lurgan Baptist. And when you go to Lurgan and Dennis Lyle sees you, he has you on the pulpit opening in prayer. But after that service was over, this man came and he threw his arms around me. Do you remember me? I says, indeed I do. Why, you brought some change in my life. And I said, sir, it wasn't me that brought the change. It was Christ that brought the change. What joy flooded his soul. I'll tell you, friend, that man knew the touch of the Lord Jesus on his heart and life. The 26th of August, 1985, I had the healing hands of the Lord Jesus on my heart and on my soul. And glory to God, I'll tell you, I've never been the same. Would you want the healing hands of Christ on your heart tonight? 
He longs to lay his healing hands upon you, dear, and upon you, sir, to take away that awful disease of sin. I want you to look at those hands tonight because those hands were nailed to the cross in order for you to receive that touch tonight. He suffered and he bled on that cross and those hands were driven through with nails. When he died for your sin and died for mine because there is no other good enough to pay the price for sin, he only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. You know, friends, tonight the healing hands of Christ were crucified to a cross as he bore your sin and mine. And thank God tonight you can have those nail-pierced hands upon your heart and upon your soul if you would only but come as a sinner to Jesus. The touch that delivered, friends. These people were dying. These people were without hope. These people had no peace. These people had no light. But I'll tell you that day, friend, they, that evening, they came to Christ. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I'll tell you, friend, you can have that wonderful change tonight if you'd only let the healing hands of Christ come upon your heart and soul. Because the healing hands of Christ can take your sin away. Will you come tonight? I want just for these last moments... I want to be some of these people who brought these diseased people because right now I'm going to bring you to the same Lord Jesus. And I'm going to bring you to his very feet right now and I want you to see him with the eye of faith. As he looks upon you, a hopeless and a helpless case, reaching out to you those nail-pierced hands longing for you tonight to allow him to lay his hands on you, to bring healing, healing of soul, healing of heart, healing of mind. You know, these people tonight, it might have been evening, but I'll tell you, it was a new day for them. The day when Jesus laid upon them his healing hand. I often wondered, is there a song that these people could have sung that day or that evening? I am sure they could sing this one. Shackled by a heavy burden. Neath a load of guilt and fear. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am never more the same. You know, friend, tonight, do you see the healing hands of Christ? They're as real tonight, they're as powerful tonight as they were in Luke chapter 4. And this day the sun has well set. And who knows? May you cry tonight, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. May tonight you find yourselves under the healing hands of Christ. Let's pray. Now, friends, this evening, can I just say tonight, it's Christ who you need. It's not religion you need or reformation you need. It's Christ you need. These people were wonderfully delivered even in the very evening tide of life. What about you tonight? Will you come? I bring you to Christ tonight. Will you cry out, Lord, Lord, save me? Because he will tonight. Tonight he's calling you who is diseased with sin. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You've tried it long enough. But I'll give you rest. 
Will you come tonight? Come underneath the healing hands of Christ and receive the gift of eternal life that can be yours this evening. Lord, tonight we deal with the eternal issues. We leave them all into thy hands. We thank you, Lord, for your help, help and strength tonight. And we pray that the convicting power of God, the Holy Spirit, will indeed wrap up this meeting tonight because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We're going to sing.